as a physicist, we began to wonder how the universe got here in the first place. And the current thinking uh, is that it big banged into existence. Or there might have been multiple bangs. Some of them disappeared after a while. So it might have gang banged into its ex existence. Whatever happened to it, it came out of nothing. Now by nothing, most people think in a big empty space of nothing. Uh-uh. Not even space was there. No time, no space, no matter, no energy, no thought, no consciousness. Nada. Out of this vibrant nothingness, matter, energy, space, time, consciousness, mind, emerged, came out. Technologically speaking, quantum physics is, you know, the cat's pajamas. Uh, it's the major, 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 major theory of our Western world today in terms of science. What it told us is that if the universe is not made of things, then how does it come into being? And the answer seems to be it comes into being when an observer observes anything in it. So it's opened up the door to fantastical kind of thinking, new ways of envisioning, and uh, opens this door to, well, how is it that an observer, by looking, can change what's being looked at? Well, some people may think they have to think great thoughts, and some people may think that thought creates reality, and they think if they just sit on their butts and think great thoughts, great things are going to appear right before their eyes, and it doesn't work that way at all. Never has, never will. You're in a body. This body has matter. It's massive. It's got form and shape and energy and all kinds of things that we physicists have figured out maybe not completely, but have figured out what's going on. And inertia and all the wonderful things that are in what's called a universe of matter. If it was just thought into activity without matter around, well, what that would be boring, boring, because any jackass can make a mountain of gold. What the hell value would gold have if that were the case? So in order to have value, in order to have structure, in order to have meaning, in order to have something rather than nothing, we need to be able to have resistance to th just thinking things into existence and hoping for the better. I find it utterly devastating to teach people, so-called false teachers, that come out and tell you, oh, you can think and everything will happen wonderfully for you. It doesn't work that way. You've got to put some effort into it. And we all know that. What we're missing is where the thought comes from in the beginning to even give you the idea that maybe thought can change reality. First of all, it does not exist in space and time. In other words, it isn't something real, if by real being, we mean material, tangible, physical, there rather than here. It doesn't exist like that. It's a realm of unborn, uncreated, unoriginated, unformed, out of which born, created, original, and form comes into being. So there's got, it's, it's a realm in which is neither space nor time, out of which space and time come into being.
Everybody's in contact with that realm because you can't help but be in contact with the realm because your thoughts themselves are arising from that realm. In fact, mind is an emergent phenomena from that realm. The big thing we're talking about here is a new way of thinking about this thing we call the person, the self, the beingness, the I. And as we begin to modify what we mean by that, we could begin to see and touch upon this infinite realm that I'm speaking about, this realm of non-existence out of which existence comes.